This is The Change Physician, episode 191. Welcome back to The Change Physician. I am Melissa Katie, the Challenge Doctor, with my co-host, Dr. Kevin Kikaro. And we're here today to talk to you about the basics of travel hacking, potentially, for physicians. And I think Kevin has some really good pointers from personal experience, I take it. I, I, I wanted to talk about this because was I've been spending a lot more time recently. Um, for those of you who've been following for a long time, you know, my whole Marriott journey and in last year's kind of goofiness with doing, doing Marriott stays just to, to achieve these, these elite things that are kind of silly, but are fun and can actually amplify your, your, your hotel experience or your traveling experience. And I started thinking, well, what, you know. There, there, I, we're, I am no means an expert on this. There are people who are massive, like over the top, like in anything that like any sort of specialty, there are people who are so good at this stuff that it's absurd. But what I am is I'm at least somewhat of a beginner. So I think I can explain just the basics that aren't so overwhelming with this. Cause I do think that there is some substantial value to these kind of these little minimal travel hacking tricks. And particularly if you're a physician, this can actually work out really well for you. So for, for travel hacking, what I'm really going to be talking about is this idea of rewards and particularly loyalty to either a brand or, um, or sort of a medium. And the biggest ones that come out a lot are either the flights or the hotels. Yeah. And I was thinking, well, okay, well, to, this brings up credit card use, like what the, the, the rewards credit cards. And the other thing to kind of consider here is the life phase that you're in whether you're a new physician or perhaps, you know, there's new physician, single married, there's uh, uh, physicians with families and then the age of the kids or empty nesters or solo or, or, or late career physicians. I think those are all important things to be considering here. Mm -hmm. And then the other one about long-term plans and the other, and the last part is um, really being aware of the kind of the time frame that you're looking at. And the reason I wanted to talk about this specifically is if you're a new physician listening to this, there's things that you can do now that actually you can reap rewards for much longer, like way, way down the line that you may not realize. Specifically for me, when we were driving my family across the United States from Michigan to San Diego, where I was starting my, my first attending position in the, in the Navy at the time, uh, one of the things we did, we stayed with an aunt. And my aunt had done a lot of travel with FEMA. So if you're all these business travels, they end up kind of oftentimes signing up for reward programs and the reward program she was signed up with is Marriott. And because of her, her, her travel with work, she was at a pretty high status. She was, she was platinum at the time. And the platinum in those old days was actually 75 nights a year. So she had these special perks and she ended up like reserving us a room somewhere else. Like when we were doing, when we were traveling. And I remember thinking, this is super cool. Mm -hmm. So it got stuck in my brain about Marriott. So I signed up for their travel program. And then I didn't really think about it that much. And, and because we had, you know, two kids under the age of four, yeah, definitely two kids under the age of four, starting a new job, my wife starting a new practice, and we were super, super busy. Mm -hmm. But we had established, um, we at least at least established that we were with the program, right? So, so anytime we did a stay, then it would be generally include points of it. The other thing that we did was um, I kind of heard about these, these credit cards. Mm -hmm. And so we signed up with a credit card. I'm, I'm retrospectively, I can't remember exactly which one it was. It was probably an American express because I think, you know, we, to, we did all our shopping at Costco and Costco used to only take American express. And what that, what, one of the things that happened with that and which I was completely oblivious to is the spend. So some of these reward credit cards, what they do is if you spend X amount of money, they will give you status with the attached uh, loyalty program. Mm -hmm. And so somehow through this, what ended up occurring is because we funneled all of our spending through a credit card. Mm -hmm. And because we were doing so much spending at Costco during those years with this, with this Amex, we kept hitting whatever the minimum spend was, which is usually like. I don't know, thirty, thirty-five thousand dollars, which sounds like a lot, except when you're a four-person household and you're pumping it all through one credit card and you're doing all your primary shopping somewhere. Mm -hmm. And what that did is it kept bumping up early status. And I didn't really clue into this. All I knew is when we go to a Marriott, something would happen. Mm -hmm. Like I, we were like, you know, you're gold. I'm like, what does that mean? I don't even have a clue. <laughs> well, you you get these extra perks. And then what I really, really didn't look at until a couple of years ago was that because we had set this baseline. And because we had maintained that loyalty for so long, 
-hmm. we were well on this path of what they call lifetime elite. And so with lifetime elite, and there's different tiers and I'm in the Marriott program, it's there's silver, gold, platinum that are lifetime categories that you can meet. And once you've made that, you have to actually maintain that status for, you know, five years, eight years, 10 years. Mm -hmm. And you have to have a minimum of nights or elite night credits, which go from like 200, 400 to 600. Once you've attained that, you never have to get status again. That's cool. And you get the benefits. Mm -hmm. And so these perks are things like, so from a hotel loyalty pr program, what you're looking at is the, like the basic one for if you're a basic member is like upgraded internet, which is not a huge big deal anymore because a lot of the places are just giving upgraded internet anyway. Mm -hmm. But then you get these check-in things that most of the time we never use. The biggest ones that we've really, really seen the most value with is um, with, the, with the room upgrades. And again, we stumbled onto that one because when Marriott moved, merged with plat with uh, Starwood and the Starwood people wail and moan because it really hurt them. They were apparently the best loyalty program and now they're gone. Mm. And, but there was this restructuring. And so what was previously gold and Marriott became platinum and Marriott. And then mm. I don't, I don't know what they did with the, the Starwood people. So all those years that we were gold magically became platinum. Wow. And so when we went to Japan, and we rented a room at the, whatever the Marriott property we stayed at there was, they upgraded us to the suite. Wow. And it was insane. Like, first of all, you're in Japan, rooms are small. Yeah. There was four beds, uh, a sitting area, the, the everything else. And then the other benefit that you get once you're about like platinum or above is this lounge access. And what the lounge access then is it changes the game because with the lounge, with, pre-COVID what the lounges are is basically like some of these hotels are insane. Like this, this place in, in Tokyo had unobstructed views of the ocean and Harbor. Wow. They had like a full buffet breakfast. Um, and it was free for if you had lounge access, which was included with the status that we had. Wow. So now you're looking at things like, okay, well, I can get the basic hotel room. And then because of my status, I can actually get upgraded rooms if I'm traveling with a family, I have more, you know, more uh, these dining options. So you don't, you know, you don't have to eat outside. We, we like to go out and eat and eat the local food, but for basic stuff, it's always kind of nice. Or, well, this, this place in Japan had like amazing buffet breakfast. It was insane. So, so it, it changes your, your, um, it changes your travel experience more than a little. So like my first point of, of, of kind of recommendation for anyone, whether you're, you know, starting on this and you're kind of new or inexperienced or even just starting late is one, look at the rewards and then make sure you get a, a credit card that's associated with those rewards. So what's your, if you're a full, if your flights are the big things, cause you're flying all the time, you're going to want to do flight rewards. If you're going to do hotels, you want a ho hotel reward program. And there's multiple different ones. Um, People can, there's some always changes with them. What I like about Bonvoy is, Bonvoy is they're the biggest hotel chain in the world. So they have f properties everywhere. Hmm. Um, and they seem to be pretty fair, even with the recent changes. And then the last thing is there's cash. If you are a hardcore engineering finance person, what you're going to, they're going to always say is like, well, go with a cash back reward card because it's cash back, right? And um, that makes probably the most sense objectively because you're just getting cash for cash and cash can be spent. I will say from a subjective standpoint, though, it's a lot less fun. And um, like I get like these because of these the way these rewards, how it gamifies the thing. And this is we I think we've talked about gamification. Mm -hmm. Did we talk about gamification? Anyway, I've noticed, I've found out that I am like way into gamification. Yes. And, and so what that does is it, it definitely increases the money we've spent, but it's fun. <laughs> I'm like, I actually have fun doing this stuff now. Yeah. So, no, oh, go ahead. No, no, you finish. All right. I was going to, I was going to say, so the biggest thing is, is enroll early with a loyalty program make sure for you can do it all of them if you really want, but you're going to want to focus on one predominantly get a credit card or credit cards. They're aligned with the rewards that you most want with that program. Mm -hmm. And then really is it is to, is to differentiate. Well, if you're going to do cash, it's easy. Just reward, do a cash rewards card, filter everything through it and you're done. 
boring, whatever, but you're going to do probably better over long term. The other ones, is the, the big differentiator is the planes. Like if you're going to really focus on a rewards card that focus on airline miles, mm -hmm. or you're going to focus on a rewards card for a hotel chain. And there's, it, there's pros and cons with that because obviously airline miles can be very, very expensive. Mm -hmm. Hotels can generally be cheaper unless they're doing high-end property. My argument though, is if you're not flying all the time, you're probably going to get more value out of that hotel chain. At least in at least in my book. And then there's some transferring that you can do between the two, but really you want to just stick with one, either stick with the airline or stick with with the uh, with the hotel. So question for you on the if you get the credit card that's associated with the programs, like you know, with Marriott, isn't there like a dual benefit? Like um, many times with cards you get the points and and credits or whatever for all your purchases, but there's even if you didn't use it basically you're still getting some is it connected where you're getting this like credit in the hotel membership where you're being seen as a even if you don't use those points from your credit card to the purchases is it is it is it witnessing like what your your level of points you've accrued with the credit card or is it only whenever you spend points for the hotel Okay, so the credit, what the credit card does is it provides you bonuses, right? right? Like there's like, like your baseline bonus bonuses. And some of those things would be like, like the biggest ones for, 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 for a hotel credit card is they generally give you night credits. So for, for Marriott, if you have a personal business card that's through, that is that's affiliated with their loyalty program, mm -hmm. that personal, that personal credit card gives you 15 nights and that 15 nights then influences your, your yearly nights that you need. So mm -hmm. like silver needs 10. So if you have one that's giving you 15 nights every year, you're already qualified for silver status, which isn't much, but it gets free internet or whatever. Yeah. But what 15 does, you only need 10 more nights and then you're gold. And then gold has a different tier. Right. So, and those are, those are whatever you do, whether or not you spend any money on the credit card at all. The other advantage though, is with the credit cards is if you have the credit card that matches the loyalty program and you use that credit card to book and spend money at the hotel, mm -hmm. you get a lot more points. Mm -hmm. So, um, I, it, in the points kind of change as you're, because as you're, it sort of accelerates. So as you accelerate, as you increase your status, the amount of points you get actually goes up substantially as well. So it's like 10% bonus. If you're silver, it's like 20% or something when you're, when you're uh, gold it platinum is 50% bonus on points. So if you spend, you know, a hundred dollars at a hotel, it's a Marriott hotel and you're using your credit card. You, I think you usually get like six points per dollar. So it's 600 points. And then you get 50% more points if you're, if you're platinum. So then it becomes like 900 points. And so, so it sort of like feeds into itself. Yeah. It's almost like an exponential. It grows exponentially in the benefits you receive based on, you know, you can accelerate and gamify go do more with that membership what my point i was getting to is that i've looked so capital one venture card is a popular uh card that actually I like um even on their fraud detection and alerts mm -hmm. and stuff is nice but they have um when i compared with the points what i would get with cash what i would get with a special kind of purchase or gift cards or with using it for a flight or some other perks, there is not always a direct correlation on a money level. Totally. So sometimes I find that the cash makes sense, but if you compare the benefits you get, it doesn't, you actually, I think, get a little bit less by getting the cash than if you utilize it for some of these other programs that are in partnership and stuff. Um, and they even, you know, even the um, interesting thing about this card is that you could use points to buy a flight, but if you're like, oh man, I didn't use my points last month for that flight, they have a purchase eraser where it'll let you go back and apply it to something you didn't use your points for, use actual cash in it or the credit the charge. Um, but I think that there's something to say about it. it's, it's not always a direct, you know, uh, money amount it's the loyalty the um 
designating yourself different than people who just make a random purchase, like maybe at Marriott or something like that. So it's even just getting on an email address list, say you're a member, even if you're not platinum, like sometimes you get access to things that you wouldn't have known about. And, mm -hmm. and, the, and the perks just get better and better because you're basically getting access and privilege. You're getting some privileges that other people won't just by having consistent loyalty. And, and so, yeah, it goes beyond just the cash value. Yeah. Well, I mean, and so I'm most familiar with obviously like, like Marriott just because of my freakishness right. with them. Yeah. But, but, you know, they build in the perks of internet. They're supposed to greet you and people like some people poo poo it and it is kind of goofy. Oh, welcome. Thank you for your whatever status kind of a deal. Um, but then there's little other perks that they give you in addition to accruing points. Like, so once you hit these specific tiers, like I think it's platinum. So gold, they can give you an upgraded room platinum. You start getting into the suite category. Um, titanium, you can get suites at other properties, like the higher end properties as well. But the other big one, and this is one I've just kind of been exploring a little bit more, is certain properties, they there's a gift. They call it the, the gift mm -hmm. when you come to the door. Like, mm -hmm. And they're supposed to offer you a gift. Yes. And it's a choice of gift. And the choice of gift is usually points, you know, anywhere from like 500 to 1,000 points for stay mm -hmm. or something else. And what I've now, what I've learned recently about this is a lot of times that 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 other gift is often breakfast. And that breakfast is per night and it's generally for member plus one. So if a property does that, they can either offer you whatever the breakfast profile is, or they can give you a food and beverage credit that you have to use every day, which can ranges in from 10 to $20 per person for up to two mm -hmm. per night. Mm -hmm. So then you're going, okay, well, unless I'm like really not going to be here at all. Now I have to look and see, well, what's this extra thing? So like when we just went to Seattle and we stayed at a Marriott property there, Mm -hmm. they, we got, um, the breakfast, the special breakfast for two, mm -hmm. and that was a full buffet breakfast. And what we basically did is cause we went with the kids. I don't eat a lot of breakfast. My wife doesn't eat a lot of breakfast. We sent the kids every day to get these breakfasts that were literally to, it was, that was 56 bucks a day in breakfast. Wow. Cause it was $28 per person right. to go to this buffet thing. And we stayed for, that was three days. So, you know, that's another hundred and $168 of bonus to, to whatever this type of thing is. So it, it, it is, it's, it's, it, that's the game thing though. It becomes, you start yeah. finding these things and there's not like, I mean, you have to, if you have to, you have to read the terms and conditions, but the right. more you do it, the more you learn. And that, so that brings another point here is, is rather than rather I, what I would do is I would sign up for every hotel. Like if you stay at a hotel to sign up for their loyalty program, just yeah. do it. Right. If yeah. you fly with an airline inside of their loyalty program, yeah. but focus on one. Like if you want to do airlines, focus on a airline program. Mm -hmm. And if you're with a hotel, focus on a hotel program. If you're doing sort of a hybrid, which is more specific to the card, like Capital Venture or the Venture One or Chase Sapphire, the, um, which are a little bit different. And I don't have those to me are a lot more complex um, on how you do them. Um, but if you just, just focus on one and kind of specialize that and then do something else, because that's the way you're going to maximize value. Yep. Agreed. Um, yeah. And then once you've done it, then you can start expanding. It's like, it's like, because of what we're doing, we are now, we're lifetime. This year we hit lifetime platinum. So we never have to worry about that again. Yeah. So unless I want to keep doing titanium, which only provides a little extra perks, like 75% bonus points as compared to 50% and the potential to get upgraded suites and like Ritz, but Ritz will never do it based on my past experience with them. I mm -hmm. did not have a good experience with Ritz, mm -hmm. but um, uh, so there's these other little perks, but it almost makes more sense. We'll then start doing something else. So now I'm looking at airlines because COVID is yes. starting to open up. Yeah. So then like our um, we're, two hours from Portland, which is a total pain, but we have a small regional airport down the street from us is about 40 miles away. Mm -hmm. So then I'm looking at, well, what are the major airlines flying in and out? Yes. Alaska. Ooh. Alaska has a bunch of flights out of Eugene. Alaska airlines has the currently right. That was the highest ranked airline That's rewards true. program. Oh, so then the next phase will be go for the Alaska things. And, um, and, but that's influence also on where we travel. We travel predominantly West coast. We travel to Asia that's their partners all there, the airport's close to us. So it's, it's just, it's, 
it's something that I kind of wish I knew more about earlier on, which is the point of this episode is, is it, it's, you know, if you hate all this stuff and you don't want to think just do cashback rewards, but if you're kind of like to do traveling and you, and you want to think about this stuff, just, just focus on one reward program and learn the ins and outs. And, and there actually is some benefit to it. There is, there, 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 I mean, I'm just thinking from our stays this year alone. So we did a point stay at the Ritz Carlton at Tahoe for five nights because of the way these point stays go. You actually only pay four nights with points and you get a free night. It's a free night at the Ritz rack rate at the Ritz for the, for the room that we had was $1,200 a night. So wow. that was a $6,000 hotel stay. Now wow. the Ritz and some of these other places do these destination fees and all these other little stupid things in there. Plus the food was way over the top. So we ended up sp spending like 1500 bucks, 1500 nut bucks for five nights at the Ritz that normally would cost you 6,500 bucks. Wow. You, I mean, you, you just, you, you just can't, I mean, if that's something, unless you're, you know, you people like, like whoever wants to pay $1,200 a night for a hotel room, which I actually don't want to be in a hotel room that much to actually live in a $1,200. Like I don't want to pay $1,200 a night for a hotel yeah. room, but um, you have to be under quarantine because of COVID in that place to want to enjoy that much of the hotel. Yeah. And, and I guess some places, I mean, I, I was really disappointed in that property. I didn't think it was like the risk Carlton is supposed to be this amazing customer service thing. And I was like, this is not that. And I think it's just specific that probably property, by the way, I, not to, so if anybody's had a great experience with the Ritz, it's probably true. I'm just saying this property had some significant problems and they're actually well noted uh, that we didn't know about, but it, but you do that stuff where now you, um, and then you talked about like, like point value and how do you calculate whether to pay points or cash? So if you have these free nights, which are like 35,000 to 40,000 points, one of the things is to make sure you use them because those typically expire in a year. So yeah. the first thing is use it or lose it. Like if, if don't hoard the things, and I wouldn't even recommend hoarding points for long periods of time because there's these devaluing things that go on. But if you're strategic about them and you're thinking you and they kind of have these estimates, um, you kind of say, well, okay, if we're going to say that each point is worth 0.7 cents, so not even quite a cent, you can do some rough multiplication to see, well, am I getting a good deal of this by using a free night or am I, is it better for the cash rate? Mm -hmm. Typically, if it's anything under 150 bucks, just pay it because you're getting all, you know, now you're paying in cash, you get all the rewards points that are associated with your credit card spend, and then you can use those someplace else. And then you save, you know, you save those, you, if you, if you're, cognizant about looking for when things make sense. Like if you're always applying, you're going to places in the most demand periods, it's going to be a lot tougher, but if you have some degree of flexibility and you, and you look like, I like shoulder seasons. I'm not a big, like, even when my kids were little, I, we preferred shoulder seasons. If we can arrange it as a physician and we have a little bit more control over that, you can, um, you can get some really, really good deals. And so, you know, we're, we're using points for, we have six more stays at least this year. Uh, we're going to be in London for a week. We're paying 400 bucks for the room. Wow. Yeah, for, because for, for the, for the, wow. For five nights. Wow. Because we're using 200 and whatever, 270,000, 267,000 points. So we're, we're using all that. And that, and that would, that hotel room is, that's 500 plus a night. I think it's like 600 and something dollars a night. So again, now you're saving $2,600 with, with just by kind of a, using the point. So you use points, you use points when things are really, really expensive. And if they're cheap, you use dollars. And now you're sort of like leveraging all this stuff. And, and it's, as I said, it's, it's, it's a hoot and you can actually save a crap ton of money and you have fun. Like, I mean, that's the other thing. Like it's, it's kind of fun thing to do. Yeah. You know, I was just thinking about, uh, cause I like to do Airbnbs a lot. Um, and I was just looking, it looks like if there might be some other options here, but I think they have an Airbnb like credit card and all that stuff, but there's a thing called T points on Airbnb, like earn a point for every certain amount you spend. And it's actually only for, I guess you have to be from Japan for this one. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I mean, you know, these things, just look, whatever it is that you, your style of travel or any 
Um, you know, whether it's, if you like to do roadies, <laughs> don't like to get in the, you know, airplanes or avoid a whole bunch of people, you know, it's pretty crowded and crazy lately. It sounds like people I've heard, um, everyone trying to get back into the swing of, of flying, but, but whatever it is that you enjoy doing, like look for the, the thing, Airbnb, hotels, whatever stays and find the rewards program and just get on board. And then you start getting emails, you start learning uh, just organically over time, like what, what the benefits are. And, uh, but like, I think like Kevin said, it's important to, uh, you got to show your loyalty in some way. So you got to actually put a little bit of, you can't just do it once. You got to have some repetition to, to accrue those kind of benefits and depending on how the structure is, but yeah, and we didn't even talk about sign us bonuses and how to like, you know, watch the bonuses on the, on the credit cards. Cause those, oh, yeah. 50,000 miles you get thrown on your card. I've done that. <laughs> yeah. Well, we got a hundred and we had 275,000 points we got last year wow. um, from two credit cards because wow. that, oh, the other, because there's a personal, a lot of times there's a personal card and then there's a business card uh-huh. and people say, well, I don't have a business. You're a physician, you're a business. Yeah. And you can, you, it, it, from every now granted i also have an llc on the side but but right. for every you can there's like literally if you're a physician that's a business you can get a business credit card so now you have two cards they give you 15 say 15 nights that's 30 nights now you're you only need 20 nights and then you're gonna hit platinum if you're in in the marriott program um and, that, and that's similar to to you know whatever your Lloyd program is just kind of look and see well there's an advantage to having a business credit card and then there's an advantage to having a personal credit card definitely and yeah and then I would say the last part though is about using it. The, the, my, my push and the reason I think I, I like hotels better than airlines is because the other thing is when you're on these little, on the edge of kind of hitting an elite night status, there's these, so in the airline industry, I forgot what they're called, but they're like mileage runs. So people to maintain high levels of, of mileage membership will take flights so they can meet the miles for the year. Like oh, I yeah. remember reading about someone who literally like flew from like the longest flight the airline had, I don't know, it was like New York to Australia or whatever, mm-hmm. flew there and then turned around and flew back because they just needed the whatever ridiculous amount of thousand miles to maintain their super, super duper high elite, whatever it was. Um, right. Or take connections to add yeah. up the mileage. Yeah. yeah. So, so, but for that to me is painful. Like that does not sound fun. No. In the hotel world, there's thing called mattress runs, but mattress runs are just quick stays at, at whatever hotels that you want just to get the elite night credit. Those are fun for me. Like I don't need to stay in the Ritz, but I can stay in a nice clean hotel. My wife and I can leave, take like, then just stay for a night. Uh, this is, this is what it was fun last year is because every, you know, you're in the house with your kids all the time. Well, now we can leave for a night and have almost like a little staycation away. Yeah. You can still be in the room, even with, even if there's whatever you just order takeout and those are, so now you're doing a mattress run, but it's actually fun. Yeah. And uh, so I, I, I would also keep that in the, in the, well, what are ways that you, if you want to push your status up, do you have to fly super long flights and just turn around and come back? Or, you know, figure out that because that's a time commitment too. these long flights. Like if you don't have time to take, but I can do a weekend stay or two weekend stays or three weekend stays. It doesn't affect anything. Like it doesn't affect work schedules. It doesn't take, you know, vacation, call coverage, nothing like that. Um, so I think it's just an easier way to, to kind of manage that stuff. So obviously I'm super biased because that's me hotel yeah. first, and then maybe, and then start moving into the airline stuff. Yeah. What's crazy is how much gamification or interest in getting that next level not just buying a flight you don't need but you can buy the points Mm -hmm. and And, sometimes that makes sense yeah yeah but interesting if like Qantas is how I get to Australia New Zealand I don't have enough frequency for me to really maximize on the benefits of the points Mm -hmm. and it just feels like I'd I'd have to go there with more frequency to really benefit so the bad thing is if there's a certain place you'd like to go and you have to use a flight and it's not very often, unlike these hotel chains that are all over the world, you get you can get the benefit close by, far away, doesn't matter. But with something like the flights that I do that are, you know, on the other side of the world or the other side of the other hemisphere, you're dealing with probably an impractical 
like unless I had a business and I'm there frequently or I could do that, which I guess I could as a self-employed person, but I'm also trying to do work. <laughs> um, those are long flights. You don't necessarily want to be gone for a week or two. So you usually do a nice long trip, but uh, yeah, so, I think the so hotel- gonna, Qantas is part of one world. Yes. So, it, so now, okay. So then you look at what their domestic These other partner, flights. American or Alaska. So then you, if, if you're, if you're in the United States, then you would want to go with either American, which I hate or Alaska, yeah. which I love and yeah. then being theirs. And then you can transfer airlines of points. So, uh, yeah. that's, so that's the other thing I would just look at is if you like one particular air France or Singapore or whatever, we'll find who their partners with so that that's, you're maximizing that spend. Yeah. For domestic flights, it can roll over into yeah. one world that you can use your internationally and domestic points to go together in one aggregate. Yeah. Um, yeah. Cause cool. that's a big one, right? Cause you know, that's a long flight. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's a long flight. Yeah. Bigger, bigger flights for sure. And bigger credits, but not with enough frequency. <laughs> Until um, you start gaming it. Like that's a, like I, I, I said, that's my, our next plan is to do the Alaska thing. And I've already found that you can get a first class ticket on Cathay Pacific to Hong Kong for like 70,000 points one way. Wow. And we like Cathay and I really want to frag. That's a long flight. I'm like, Ooh, this will be fun. This will be fun. There you go. <laughs> awesome. Well, cool. Well, since I kind of brought us in, you want to take us out? Sure. Well, thank you all for joining us today. This is again, um, travel hacking basics for physicians. Biggest thing, find your, what you want, whether if you're going to go straight cash, that's cool. You're going to make more money that way. If not pick your loyalty airline, really airline or hotel, uh, start early and roll with everybody that focus on one focus on one that you, that, uh, until you learn the ins and outs of that and then go next. And it's a fun way to sort of, um, to just sort of gamify your life. And as a physician, we have the spending profile. And if you fil filter everything, like, like your credit cards, in which case you also have a log to see what you're spending on, which is kind of nice. Um, you can actually rack up points really, really quick. So anyway, that's it for today. And if you want to learn more or join, join more of the, of the change physician community, go to changephysician.com. And until next time, stay well. Take care.